the creation of value out of nothing is something that I just love. And so any opportunity to do that, for me, feels like fun play rather than work. Sophie, back in the office. I can't wait to embarrass you. Welcome back. How was New York? Good. What did you take from New York? That's good. It's more what I gave. Right. Gave a lot to New York. <laughs> it's good to have you back. Thank you. Um, the meeting was from our Singapore team and um, they've had a client come back to us that we've worked with over here but we've not worked with in Singapore yet. They've given us quite a hard like dummy brief to kind of test us and see what we can do. I had a call them this morning because obviously it's an eight hour time difference so their day is ending when ours started but it means we've got the whole day to crack on so mm. weirdly it does kind of work because we catch them at the end but they catch us when our minds are fresh and we then have the whole day to think about what we're going to go back to them with. The creative relay team. Exactly. What they've given us, they're trying to target quite a young demographic and so you have to be very, very careful, careful yeah. with how you market to them and to make sure we're sticking with guidelines and that it's all kind of ethical the way we're reaching them. So trying to go across vertical and make it engaging and make it something that you're going to get user generated content is a lot to kind of put into one meeting. But um, we're very lucky, we've got a lot of very talented people in our team. Right, I'll have to give out the people that pass over probation, chilies bottles. Shania. Okay. Hello. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Well done. Yay. Enjoy. Probation's a big thing at Go. Over there. We're a business that wants to give people a chance, and giving people a chance means fundamentally hiring people when maybe other people wouldn't because they don't tick every checkbox, for example. So we'll give people who are raw but smart an opportunity to prove themselves in those first three months that they're the right sort of person to be here. Thank you, Sally. Say that. Yay. Congratulations. Yay. Congratulations. Cheers, mate. Enjoy every sip. We judge people on three metrics, always have done, which is can do, will do, team player. So can you physically do the job? Are you smart enough to understand what's going on? Can you actually move quick enough? All those sorts of things. We tend to figure that out within the first three months. Will do is a massive one, and essentially what that means is how much do they actually want to do it. You get lots of people who can do the job, they just don't really want to. So the other one is team player. Are they gonna help um, somebody three, three chairs down for them because they've got a problem, rather than just leaving at six o'clock, they stay another 20 minutes to help that person with a problem. These are the things that we tend to figure out in the first three months. Some people don't make it past that first three months. We're, you know, we don't shy away from that, our standards are very high, but it means when people pass their probation three months in, there's a real sense of, of achievement and the rest of the business then truly knows, okay, this is another goat, this is one of us. Hey girl! Hi! How's it going? Good. How no, was the US? No, no, no! I need to burp. Hey girl! How was the US? Uh, it was really good, I'm sure everyone's sick of hearing about it now. Hey girl! Bye. Tell the fans what you what you did and what you saw. Um, <laughs> oh, we used up our walkway. Ready? Lucy goosey, baby. Oh, I'm quite sweaty, actually. Hey, girl. Didn't even take full. I'm a natural. <laughs> what did you see and what did you do? Um, saw the sights, did some work. What more can you ask for from your head of proposals? Sorry, we uh, we haven't had much content over from Singapore in the last 24 hours, but. We've been putting together a load of proposals. It just takes a little bit longer here because we span such a vast and diverse uh, region here of APAC that when we're putting together a proposal for India, it doesn't correlate at all with anything that uh, we're doing in Indonesia, for example, because the cultures are so different. And so a lot of the time we're answering briefs that are from three or four different countries in APAC. And, each country needs to have a different mechanic for the proposal and so when we're breaking a proposal down it might be one KPI of generating awareness of this app across Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia and Singapore. But all four of those countries require different platforms, different mechanics, different influences. Um, and so it's almost like doing four proposals so they just take a little bit longer here. So what have we got on today? I'm off to meet an app called Tiger Hall who have asked me to appear on a series of podcasts about influencer marketing and social. So that starts 
next week so looking forward to doing that and um, Indy's off to meet a few influencers to chat about the market and where they're getting uh, most of their deals from and where they see the market going um, in Singapore. Cool to hear it from an influencer side about whether they are feeling the heat from brands about not trusting them um, because if they are then they need to do something about it. It's interesting my hobby is sort of starting to disappear as time goes on and my real hobby is this and I don't I don't see it as a chore seeing opportunity and taking advantage of that opportunity um, when other people can't quite see it is my hobby in a weird way I walk around the streets and I see a pasta stand or something like that and my default is to start running the numbers on that in my mind trying to understand okay how are they doing this where are they providing value where are they not the creation of value out of nothing is something that I just love. And so any opportunity to do that, for me, feels like fun and play rather than work. A great day of sport yesterday. Certain team are back at the top of the table. I've seen this all before. <laughs> I don't know, it's a weird one actually with football because I used to be the biggest football fan ever. But to be honest, ever since working in sport, I've become far less interested. As obviously we've, we've kind of all grown up and needed to really work harder and we've built this business, I can't just sit on Twitter all day. So I'm less wrapped up in the whole day-to-day -day churn of, of being an Arsenal fan. Harry's slightly different. I think he still doesn't quite get excited, but for me it still does something to me. When Arsenal score, it still sends something down me. I obviously used to run football websites when I was 16, 17, 18. And then I worked at Sport Lobster where football became everything because as social media manager, I'd stay up and watch every game and cover it live on Twitter. And as much as it is amazing to do the thing that you uh, love and idolise the most is your job, it also makes it your job. I don't know, I just, it's the 90 minutes now. It's not as much as it used to be. Appreciate all the love and support you give to these vlogs. We do them every single day and we never hide from the cameras. Thank you so much again. Like, comment and subscribe below and we'll see you next time.